Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining Crank Software's Inside the GUI series. As part of our customer case study sessions, All Weekend in Better World, today we're talking about an exceptional example of rapid, high-quality GUI development involving our customer, Dometic. From cooking to taking care of hygiene to keeping temperature comfortable, Dometic makes mobile living easy for adventurers worldwide through their line of products for RVs, boats, trucks, and campers, basically anything outdoorsy. To enter a new market category with only months before their biggest event of the year, the RVX show, Dometic decided to use Crank Storyboard to support the development of their interact control system for RVs, and they won first place uh, for, at that show. Joining me today to discuss this project are Nick Schultz, Field Applications Engineer at Crank, and Gary Clarkson, Field Applications Engineer as well at Crank. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Hi there. Ron. So Nick, we'll start with you, since you were uh, involved in this project from start to finish. Uh, as the project was being kicked off, can you sort of provide an overview of what Dometic was trying to accomplish and, and how the project started? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in uh, October, near the end of the month, I want to say, Dometic uh, engaged with us and uh, we're, we're looking to uh, find a graphic solution for the new product that they were looking to uh, demo at the uh, RVX show. And you know they were really looking to hit the ground running. Everything was new, uh, new hardware, new software stack, and um, you know they they needed uh, some help. So we uh, we engaged with them and we uh, got them up and running. We we got them uh, developing uh, prototypes and and concepts, and uh, really helped them uh, knock it out of the park for the show in January, which was uh, really really awesome. And in terms of uh, some things that they were using with Crank Storeboard, can you talk a little bit about uh, the features that, uh, that that they used and and sort of the support that you gave? Absolutely. So they needed a uh, a way to start bringing um, you know rapid design and iteration in house. Uh, traditionally, they hadn't really done any of it. They were outsourcing, and um, you know they needed a a way to really lower the barrier to entry. So some of the functionality in Storyboard. Um, you know, the ability to use Lua scripting to, to help them create their application logic without requiring an embedded engineer to do that was really, really powerful. Um, they also had the ability to import uh, assets directly in from design files. So instead of, you know, uh, designing content, uh, slicing it up and handing all those assets off to a developer to mock them up and, and write layout code, it came right into the project. And um, you know they could just start adding functionality and behavior from there. Now that's great, Nick. And uh, Gary, just over to you for a little bit more of the technical depth of, of, of the project. Nick mentioned Lua scripting. Can you explain uh, you know what Lua scripting is used for in Storyboard? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, so it's it's uh, it's really our way of of adding dynamic behavior to a UI. Um, so we. We have the core uh, model, the, the, the visuals, uh, the assets, the images and such. And to really bring those to life, you want to add some kind of dynamic behavior. And we did that with scripting. So this might be creating animations. It might be moving things around on the screen. And Lua is a very easy way to do that. So uh, it's very uh, simple language. Uh, it's been around for a while in gaming and such. Um, and there's a lot of kind of knowledge around and help out there. Uh, so there, people are able to take this, uh, and this is traditionally not necessarily even software engineers. You know, these could be the designer guys. Um, so we want to concentrate on them doing the design uh, and the look and the feel and the experience, rather than writing lots of code. So that's what the Lua side of things is for. Is it's a very lightweight way of of kind of bringing that that reactiveness to the, the UI for me. Right, and a key challenge for the for the project was always the very short time frame that they had, uh, basically starting from zero to have needing a prototype uh, for this uh, the show in a matter of three or four three or four months. I'll just read a quote from Eric Schur, the chief engineer uh, of of the UIs at, at Dometic, and he said, uh, "In the past, adding features to our UIs was time consuming and it could cost up to one hundred thousand dollars per iteration. Now with Storyboard, we're able to add features more frequently and incorporate design feedback." faster because of its design flexibility. So Gary, uh, they're, they're talking about a kind of a key component of, of storyboard uh, functionality. Can you talk a little bit about how teams can use uh, storyboard to do those rapid iterations? Yeah, and Nick touched on it earlier, actually. Um, the, the the design team brought in those, those kind of visuals in-house using, uh, I think it was Photoshop at the time. Um, so they were creating a look and feel that they wanted uh, upfront in Photoshop. Um, and one of the unique things of Storyboard is the ability to uh, to bring those in, to import them into our tool, to start working with them and 
adding the animations and the behaviors, um, and crucially, being able to change those um, and re-import them. So it may be something as simple as changing a logo for a particular customer, or, or perhaps even creating a, another version of the application, which is uh, in you know kind of um, a day mode and a night mode. So the the, the images are changed around for best um, best behaviors. These things are in the in the cabin inside of the the kind of uh, the the living environment within the RV. So it's it's quite critical to get the light levels correctly, and and you know it's a very uh, it's a very premium product, and they they wanted just the right um, you know perfection on the graphics. So hopefully they were able to achieve that. Yeah, and I was thinking, uh, you know, another challenge that I'm sure a lot of audiences audience is aware of is uh, it's one thing to have your designs and 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 functionality in Photoshop, and another to have it in your IDE, uh, which could be a completely different thing from having that working on the actual target hardware. So in Dometic's case, they were using the NXP RT1050, I believe. So Gary, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, you know the integration with the hardware and maybe some of the optimization and performance testing that was done? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you showed one of the images before, and um, so. Uh, this was um, this was done on one of the early um, boards from from the uh, you know, NXP using the, the IMX RT uh, 1050, which is a really quite a neat processor. Uh, it has some graphics acceleration capabilities. Um, and so the, I think Dometic were one of our earlier customers on this platform. Um, and so in their case, the the screen is uh, is laid out in a portrait. Mode. So you know, it's kind of scrolling up and down. Um, and one of the things they wanted to do is potentially use uh, a screen which was native landscape. Um, so these are much cheaper and easier to to uh, to obtain. So what we did was we worked with them and uh, we looked at some of the, the features of the the, the PXP uh, part of the chip, which is a uh, pixel pipeline accelerator, and we were able to leverage that to rotate the screen for them so that they didn't lose any any performance. Um, because I don't know. Uh, Perhaps we'll touch on it later, but one of the one of the key challenges is uh, in a UI with scrolling menus. It's very noticeable if you've got some kind of notchy behavior. So it's um, you know so it's very very important to get that uh, that smooth scrolling there. Uh, and we were able to to leverage the you know the capabilities of the of the processor to do that for them. That's great. I think we have about a minute left here. So just uh, the question for both of you uh, to bring it to a more back to an industry level. Uh, what's the one thing, uh, Nick, uh, uh, that you would recommend uh, GUI developer, developers look at when they're looking at a, at a GUI development tool? Well, they really want to think about how they can embrace change and iteration. You know, and we talk about this a lot, but, you know, you're not going to get your design right the first time. You want to test it. You want to get it in front of people. So a tool that really helps facilitate that process so you can, you know, go get feedback. And Dometic did exactly this, where their their prototype that won the award at the trade show, they had real users playing around with it, and they listened to what they said, and you know, they took the stuff the users liked and the things that you know they didn't like, they incorporated that feedback back into the product and made it even better for launch. So, you know, just being able to iterate, try things out, and make changes, and you know, Storyboard gives you that functionality when you make a change in the UI and it doesn't necessarily force any change on the back end code. So it's it's very powerful. And uh, Gary, anything to add? No, it's a, you know, one of the challenges our customers find is that a lot of a lot of tools are specific to individual silicon. So um, you know, in our case, we run on NXP, but we also support lots of other um, technologies. So once you embrace the storyboard way of doing things and the, and the IDE, uh, you're able to really target different platforms. And that helps them going forward on maybe newer versions of the product, which are maybe more powerful, bigger screens and such. So it's given them kind of the uh, the ability to, to look forward over the horizon and see, what's, uh, see what they can do next. That's great. Well, thank you, Nick, and thank you, Gary, for your insights today on the project. Uh, for anyone who wants to get uh, dive into more details about the uh, about the case study and and and, and the customer, uh, you feel free to see the case study at uh, cranksoftware.com. The key takeaway being that Dometic had a vision, uh, they had a very short time timeline to deliver, a matter of three or four months, uh, and they used Crank Storyboard to, to do it. Uh, for anyone interested in uh, checking out Crank Storyboard for them, so themselves, uh, go to cranksoftware.com, uh, where you can download a free trial of the product. Uh, and as well, we have demo images for various uh, uh, hardware platforms where you can try download and try the uh, the, the GUIs for yourself. Uh, thank you, uh, Nick and Gary. And for everyone else, enjoy the rest of Embedded World.